complex PTSD is post-traumatic stress that is of a complex nature, meaning that you have had multiple and repeated ongoing traumas. 21 symptoms of CPTSD. Number one, difficulty controlling your emotions and viewing yourself in a negative light, as well as um, having shame, uh, self-hate and guilt. Difficulty controlling emotions, meaning if you have a trigger or if you have an assumption or if you have anything that is even remotely related to something that makes you feel like you are put back into that old experience, you may react in a way that is emotionally bigger than needs to be for the given situation. So that may happen. Number two, difficulty in relationships. Trust is hard, right? Um, the the unlimited amounts of triggers that are within the, the complexities of relationships, even healthy ones, can be very difficult for people to navigate when they have CPTSD. Number three, detaching and dissociation from your own emotions. That is a sign of complex PTSD. Another sign, number four, is the loss of faith or meaning in life. So you may have had uh, the kind of life where you had hope, you had faith about things, you had meaning. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, religious of nature, just the feeling of hope in life. That There's a loss of that. Number five, reliving your traumas. Number six, avoiding situations and isolating, self-isolating and avoiding situations in life. You find yourself retreating from life, you find yourself almost like depression, but different where you are just either afraid to engage, um, there can be all kinds of reasons behind it, but it is a symptom of CPTSD. Uh, another one is uh, number seven, feeling panic, dizzy, or nausea when remembering the experiences that led you to having CPTSD. So when you're recalling things you you actually have a physical physiological response and you get dizzy and you get nauseous and panicky okay number eight belief that the world is dangerous it is a dangerous place they're all out there you know you hear people after narcissistic relationships saying they think everyone is a narcissist belief that that the world is a bad place that that there is just too much danger out there that is can be caused from um the, the brain changes and all of the changes from having CPTSD. So number nine, the loss of trust in self and others. We talk about that a lot here, don't we? And the trust in self, trust in self. And we talk about how we need to regain that a lot and how to re-engage with other people and to be able to feel safe in the world, we need to learn to trust ourselves again. Number 10, sleep difficulty goes without saying, right? That's enough said on that. Sleep difficulty it could be anything from insomnia to waking at night to, to sleeping too much, right? Just changes in difficulty in sleep or with sleep, around sleep. Okay. Number 11, easily startled. And that can be not so much as a jump scare, but that can be things like um, emotional startles, emotional you know, that that response to things that are um, uh, maybe more startling than the thing should be, right? <laughs> so, or it could be actually, you know, startled. Uh, let's see. So number 12, you have triggers. Triggers are overpowering to the point where you feel like you are reliving the experience of whatever it was that you're being triggered by. Little tiny things can trigger big responses. Um, triggers are needing to now learn. So it's more than just, I got triggered. I'm okay now. Okay. Everyone has that once in a while. Ooh, that was triggering, right? You see something disturbing. That's kind of triggering. This is the kind of triggering that you come to realize you actually need to learn to work with in order to heal past it, because it is very difficult to function with these triggers. They're, they're big and they are disabling almost. And they make you feel like you're not able to do anything. You feel frozen, okay, or panicked or whatever. Okay, so number 13, there's a preoccupation with the toxic person. We need to learn about it. We need to understand it. We need to, some people need to thoroughly understand it. They need to thoroughly know what happened. They need to understand every little nuance, right? 
but the preoccupation goes deeper into their every waking thought, every waking moment, every, this is, uh, 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 by nature, it is part of how CPTSD uh, happens in people. So it's more than just an understanding and an awareness. It's a literal preoccupation where it is, it, it, it's beyond the trauma bonding, beyond that point you just can't stop with the thinking about it. And it's really interesting from where I sit because this is what I have to do all day, right? But but my point is it's, it's learning to not be preoccupied with the person themselves and the things they did, right? It's, it's, it takes healing to get past that point for, for some people because of the CPTSD going on. All right. Number 14, loneliness. There is a deep feeling of loneliness. You feel like no one gets it, even when you're in a room of people who get it. You feel like when you finally see someone who does get it, it feels like, like, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy. I'm not alone. And at the same time, you look around and your life feels completely alone because no one really knows what you're suffering. You could be sitting in a group of friends that are nice and everything, and they don't realize that you're going through all this stuff that we're talking about. It's all silent. This is all, it's like a silent um, change that happens to you when you have CPTSD that the rest of the world doesn't see, understand, or often even care about, right? Function anyway. Number 15, flashbacks. Flashbacks. We know what those are, right? Reliving it in real time through a flashback. That happens. That's part of PTSD is part of CPTSD as well. Hypervigilance, the need to protect yourself, the need to look out, the need to be always seeking if looking for red flags, you know, yes, we should always, we should be vigilant. But hypervigilance is just is uh, debilitating. It's, it's um, crushing, right? We can't get past it. We can't have normal relationships, right? Because we're hypervigilant about everything. Hypervigilant about ourselves. Some people go inward and it becomes hypervigilance about, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? Oh no, what did I, and it's more on the, the people pleasing side of things where it's like, everyone hates me. Oh no, what am I going to do? How am I going to make, how, you know, what are they thinking about me? What are, so the hypervigilance, number 17, hopeless and helpless feelings. We all know what hopelessness feels like, right? If you've if you've left a relationship with a narcissist, you know the hopelessness that comes when you make the realization that there literally is no hope, and then that hope that hopelessness can then translate through this CPTSD symptoms. I'm talking about it can it can be things like just feeling like there's no hope for life, things will never get better, you'll never feel better, you'll never have someone in your life that's good, you know, all of these things. It also can be helplessness. I can't, I can't do this. I can't take care of myself. I can't do this on my own. I'm all by myself. I can't do it. I can't, right? The I can'ts come in. The the how can I is how am I supposed to do this? Uh, it, it's um, hopeless and helpless, right? Okay, so number 18, toxic shame. There is an entire video. I will try to post it in the links or the comments about toxic shame. But, you know, it's shame that then comes out and, and becomes toxic to oneself, right? Self-hate, self-blaming, self, all of that stuff because of the shame that we feel. Number 19, it can make it so you're out looking for someone to rescue you. It can give you the feeling, again, back to the helplessness, back to the hopelessness that you're looking for a someone, something, someone to take you away, the next person, the people go from one relationship to the next is a really basic example, but going from a toxic relationship into something really fast, just, just to have someone rescue you from the feelings that you're feeling of all this stuff, right? Learning to cope with all of this stuff is huge. It's big and it's, it takes some time and some healing. So it makes sense that we would want a rescuer, right? That makes sense and it would go right along with it. Number 20, sadness. You know, there's a depressive, sad, difficult to cope, um, overwhelming sadness sometimes that people with CPTSD suffer with. And again, it all, all of this is interwoven, right? It's not one thing, but this is, uh, that's another sign. And then number 21, physical armoring, physically posturing, physically freezing up, tensing up, 
having physical symptoms that are directly related to the stress of the of all of these things that you're feeling. I can't diagnose CPTSD in someone. I'm just telling you the symptoms that are out there that that you can, I mean, you can look them up anywhere, but really I'm just trying to to voice what they are and kind of what they feel like from someone who has CPTSD and has learned to live with and work with the symptoms of CPTSD. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.